Chloe. Hi. And welcome. It's good to have you here. Um, can you um, introduce yourself to um, the viewers of No Panic? Um, yeah, sure. So thank you for having me. Um, my name is Chloe Chessel and I'm a PhD researcher and psychological wellbeing practitioner based at the University of Reading. Um, and over the last couple of years, I've been supporting parents of um, young people with anxiety. Brilliant. OK, so you're here today to discuss um, anxiety and depression in young people. Brilliant. OK, let's get straight on with it. And um, what I'd like to ask you to begin with is that we all experience anxiety in life. Um, children and children, young people are obviously no exception. Um, when should a parent be concerned about their child's anxiety? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. Um, yeah, like you said, anxiety is a normal emotion. Um, so we all experience anxiety from time to time. Um, and sometimes anxiety can be helpful in certain situations. So, um, for example, if we're kind of crossing a busy road or if um, we're preparing for a test, perhaps having some level of anxiety might be helpful in those situations. Um, but actually, anxiety starts to become a problem um, when it interferes with our day to day life um, and our ability to carry out kind of daily tasks. Um, so parents should be concerned if their child has anxiety, which is interfering with their life in different areas, really. So, um, for example, if it interferes with friendships, so they might struggle to go out and see their friends. Um, anxiety might start to interfere with family life. So, for example, um, children might not want to go out and do things as a family or they might seek lots of reassurance from parents if things are OK. Um, or perhaps they might have difficulty sleeping because of worries. Um, it might also impact school. So children might struggle to concentrate in class if they've got lots of fears and worries. Perhaps they don't want to go to school or find it really difficult to go to school altogether. So those are kind of some of the signs really to look out for if anxiety is becoming a bit more of a problem for children and young people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, great. Um, yeah, but it's, it's quite difficult actually to, to start a conversation up with children. It can be quite difficult to, to broach the subject if you're a bit worried. Um, what tips would you have on how parents can do this? I think that's really normal and understandable. It can often be quite sort of daunting for parents to start up a conversation about anxiety or mental health um, with their child. Um, and so one of our main top tips really is for parents just to be really curious um, and to ask open questions. So for example, um, what is it that worries you about this situation? What do you think might happen? So taking kind of a really curious, non-judgmental approach to trying to find out what their child's fears or worries are. Um, another thing that can be really helpful is trying to help your child to feel understood by empathising with them. So um, by that we mean kind of labelling that this is quite difficult for them. Um, so for example, parents could say, I can see that you're feeling really worried in this situation, that must be really difficult for you. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that parents might be able to do is kind of share their own experiences of anxiety to help their child feel a bit more normal. Um, so, for example, if you're a parent, you might have a presentation coming up at work that you're feeling a bit nervous for. Um, and it's OK to share that with your child and then review with them afterwards. Actually, did you manage to cope in that situation better than what you thought you did? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Something else we also recommend is kind of thinking about the time at which you try to um, kind of have this conversation with your child. Um, so for some children, they respond really well to kind of sitting down one on one with a parent um, and talking about their fears and worries. Other children might prefer if the kind of attention is sort of less on them. So, for example, if you're out kind of walking the dog um, or if you're kind of in the car driving, that might be a better time for some children to feel a bit more open about talking about their fears or worries. Um, and then finally, we encourage parents to try and make this conversation as fun and rewarding as they can. Um, so particularly for younger children, um, parents can try and bring in their child's hobbies or interests. So I've worked with parents before where they've encouraged their child to think about what their favourite book character might be worried about in this situation um, to try and promote the child to talk about their own fears and worries. Um, or if children and young people are particularly reluctant, um, then make sure you praise them if they do have a go at trying to speak about their worries with you, or perhaps even offer them a reward. So if you're having a takeaway at the weekend, let them pick the takeaway as a reward for talking about their fears and worries. Mm -hmm. Some great advice, some great tips there. Excellent. Um, so how can, how can parents support their ch child facing anxiety difficult, difficulties? 
Yeah, so that's often parents come to us and they want to know what can I do to help? Um, what are the things I can kind of do at home? Um, and so there's kind of three things really that we think might be helpful for parents. Um, the first thing is to think about how independent your child is in kind of their day to day life. Um, and that's important because if children feel more confident in their general sort of day to day life and abilities to face natural challenges, um, then they'll then hopefully feel more confident to start facing their fears. Um, so we'd encourage parents to maybe have a think about whether their child is as independent as other people their age. Um, and if there are any kind of age appropriate activities um, that children can do um, with um, yeah, that you can encourage your child to do. Um, and that's, as I said, so we can build their confidence in their ability to manage day to day tasks um, so that they then feel more confident to go on and face their fears. So that's kind of the first thing that parents can do. Um, the second thing is that parents can help their child to test out their fears in a step by step way. Um, so when I talk about this, really, it's all about kind of parents and children working together um, to identify a goal that they want to work towards. We then encourage you with your child to think about how you can break that goal down into smaller, more manageable steps. Once you've kind of had a thought about what some of those steps might be working towards that goal, it can be helpful um, if you think about with your child how anxious they would feel doing each of those steps. Um, and sometimes it can be helpful to think about this on a scale from zero mm -hmm. to 10. So zero would be no anxiety, that step would be really easy. Um, and 10 would be actually that step really anxiety provoking and really hard. Um, and then we can use those ratings to put those steps in an order, um, working from the easier steps up to the harder steps towards that goal. Um, and it's also important as well to think about what would be an appropriate reward for each of those steps um, to kind of really acknowledge that your child's doing well at facing their fears and trying to overcome their anxiety. And then once you've kind of got these steps working towards your goal in place, um, we'd encourage you to encourage your child to have a go at the first step um, to start kind of gradually facing their fears. Um, and before you do that, have a, a conversation with your child, again, open questions about what they think might happen in that situation. What is it that worries them about doing that step? Encourage them to go out and do the step. Um, and then afterwards, it's really important to review that step with your child. So did what they think happened come true? Did something else happen? What did they learn from doing that step? And, and did they cope better than what um, they thought they would? Um, so that's really one of the key ways that parents can help their child to kind of overcome their anxiety is to test out their fears. Um, and then finally, um, we encourage parents to just um, keep an eye out really for natural opportunities to encourage their child to face their fears. So there are lots of opportunities in day to day life that we might come across. Um, so, for example, if your child um, is anxious around dogs, might be that you're walking down the street um, and someone's coming towards you with their dog. Um, and a child's response might be that they want to kind of cross the road or avoid that situation. And that might be a really good opportunity to encourage your child to kind of test out and face their fears, um, to kind of stay on the same path as the dog. Um, and again, having that conversation beforehand, what do you think is gonna happen when we pass the dog? Um, encouraging your child to have a go and then reviewing afterwards actually what did happen did you cope better than what you thought so yeah really using kind of those natural opportunities that might just come up in day-to-day -day life again to encourage your child to have a go at facing their fears yeah yeah excellent advice there facing the fears instead of avoiding them is really really important yeah Okay, so so what advice do you think you could give to parents um, to prevent children from actually developing some kind of anxiety mm. difficulties? You, you might be a parent and your child has never had any anxiety at all. Well, how can we help parents, you know, um, prevent things starting in the first place? Yeah, again, I think that's a really good question. Um, and we know that anxiety is thought to kind of be a mixture of genetics and the environment. So if we focus on things in the environment, that might be a really helpful way to kind of nip any anxiety difficulties in the bud. Um, so one thing we know is that children who experience anxiety 
often have missed opportunities to learn that they can cope in their feared situations. So kind of using the tips we've just gone through really in terms of encouraging children to um, take age appropriate activities to be independent and build their confidence in day to day life. Um, encourage them to face their fears as and when they come in a step by step way if needed. I'm really looking out for those natural opportunities to just encourage children to learn new information about anxiety provoking situations. Um, another thing that parents can do is model brave behaviour to their child. So tell your child or show your child um, when you faced your fears and discuss with them how you managed to cope in that situation. So again, really normalising that we all experience anxiety, but we can face our fears and overcome them. Um, and then finally, um, just trying to encourage children to speak about their fears and worries with you. So try to encourage an open relationship so that if any fears and worries start to crop up, you can kind of um, nip them in the bud and, and start testing them out um, from an early stage, really. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so those are really important points to um, prevent things getting any worse. Yeah, that's great, Chloe. Thank you ever so much. And if anybody wants a bit more help, they can call us on our special line that we have um, for the under 18s um, to speak to somebody. Um, and you can also pop over to our website and get some more information there on uh, children and anxieties in general. Thank you ever so much, Chloe, for joining us and answering those questions. I'm sure they're going to be great use to many, many people. Thank you very much. Thank you.